All right, so we're live now on Facebook. Are we live? We are. Yeah. Keep on coming. They are coming now. Okay, na, Let's start. Okay. Yes. Hello, good evening. Um, is it good evening? Yeah, good evening, Philippines, and good afternoon here in the Middle East. So welcome again to our live pre session. Are you guys excited? So yes, please yeah. type in our chat box because we have a very special lecture for today. And you know, as um, admin of IFNG, I would like to say hi to GL Gladys. I'm Admin Gladys and Admin Marvin. Yeah. yeah. They currently... Um, Good Marvin evening, is on everyone. Right Good evening. Yeah, so what we are expecting today, um, we have a lecture from a very special um, speaker. And after this one, you will have a chance to have... We will have going to have a Q&A portion. So make sure all your questions, you just type in the chat box via Zoom or Facebook because Gladys will just copy. If you are watching on Facebook, Gladys will just copy your question, okay? So everyone will have a chance to ask their question. Okay, so without further ado, I will introduce now our special guest lecturer. So, okay, I would like to uh, please welcome our guest speaker for today, Mr. Lee J. De Jesus of World English Review. So I'm just going to give you a little background about him. So Mr. Lee J started teaching in 2005. So you're going to allow me to take a look back. I think 2005, I'm almost finishing my nursing degree. <laughs> I'm not saying Don't make me feel all, but it means that, <laughs> you know, it's more than a decade that he's working um, for this kind of tutorial or review. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. He also not only teaches IELTS, but also OET, English Civil Service Exam Preparation, Call Center Language Training. And mind you guys, uh, just only not to plant, but actually he got the um, overall score of nine in IELTS. So see, he has the credentials. <laughs> okay. And as also to add, civil service eligibility, eligibility eligibility and sorry, eligibility professional, sorry. And as well as Cambridge CELTA qualification. So what is CELTA? It's a certificate in English language teaching to adults. And that is the most prestigious, widely recognized and intensive TFL slash TESOL course in the whole world. Okay. So, and also, since he got um, overall nine in the IELTS, so he's not blonde and he doesn't have English or British accent, but still he nailed to have this 9.0 score in IELTS. So without further ado, let's welcome our guest speaker, Mr. DJ. Please turn on your mic. Hi, good evening. Thank you for the uh, very warm welcome. Okay, uh, salamat po sa introduction sa mga katulad pong Pilipino all over the world. Uh, good evening to all of you. And uh, for those of other nationalities, don't worry, I'll be speaking in English. <laughs> so, and if you don't understand me, you can ask questions anytime. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. Okay, so, okay, for a moment. Let's do it differently. Uh-huh. Here we go. Uh, 
All right, I like it better this way. Uh -huh. Okay, guys, again, um, good evening. So um, I have some advice for you, okay, before we get started. So if you have questions and you're using Zoom, you can type your questions in the Q&A box because if you put them in the chat box, we might miss them. So mas okay po kung nasa Q&A box and uh, please scan the questions. So you won't need to, you know, retype and um, everything else uh, you can put in the chat box. Um, also, this uh, seminar is free. It's your chance to ask all the IELTS related questions that you want. Okay. And uh, yeah, enjoy it, you know, um, because this is something that will help you change your life if you pass it. Okay, we all know that, you know, we can always get to a better level <laughs> than where we are now. So here's your chance, ask your questions. And if you're interested about our review programs, yeah, let's do that later at the end because not everyone is, you know, interested in enrolling. And uh, I understand many of you are just here for the free um, information. So don't worry, I'll still give you everything that I have to share, okay? So, um. Thank you for the nice introduction earlier. So, sir, already said um, all of these. So I've been teaching for about, oh, no Q&A. There's no Q&A box. Right. So just type it in the chat box. So started teaching 2005. So it's been uh, almost 16 years. And uh, yeah, I got a nine in my test. I'm civil service eligible. I have a CELTA qualification from Cambridge. And uh, I just put the last one here as a joke, you know, as an encouragement to you, because a lot of people think that the nine is impossible. No, it's not. No, I'm not blonde. My hair is, uh, well, it looks black, but I have a lot of gray hairs now. Okay. I don't have a British accent. Okay. But I still got that for, and, you know, I didn't even grow up in an English speaking family. I just, I just, uh, you know, did my best and eventually I got it. My first take, I didn't get nine. Uh, First one was with British Council in 2006. I only got 7.5. And then 2012, I think, I got uh, 8.5. And then finally, tried again in 2019, I got my 9. So it's a matter of working on it, right? What else do you need to know? Oh, one of my goals is to become an IELTS um, examiner, okay, hopefully soon. And I was already an OET interlocutor. So um, I just like to inform you guys, if you're interested in having an OET session, you can ask, you know, uh, if it fits your schedule, okay, maybe I'll be available to help answer all of your questions about it. But tonight is for IELTS, Paul. We have another uh, teacher, Sir Barry, and uh, he's British. Uh, he's a lawyer, but decided to live here in the Philippines. Okay, so if you're gonna, go with us uh, you'll meet either you know you can you have the chance to meet both of us uh, you know study with both of us anyway <clears throat> i'm gonna go back to this one later so let's get to the gist of it okay why are all of you here tonight to learn about speaking so many of you probably already know this piece of information on the screen okay because uh because of the internet there's a lot of information available but for those who are not familiar let me give you a short overview so the speaking test is only 11 to 14 minutes it's the shortest of the four subtests hindi man siya abot ng 15 minutos okay most examiners will end it at around 13 and a half it's a one-on-one -on -one interview Okay, uh, and it's recorded because from time to time, these interviews are checked by a second examiner. Okay, then that is to ensure fairness, all right? So is it conducted face-to-face? -face? Uh, it depends. Um, in Korea, I think it's conducted face-to-face -face now and also in some other countries, but in the Philippines, they're still using um, Zoom to conduct this. So you still need to go to the venue, but the examiner and the candidate will be in separate rooms. You will have your own computer terminals and you'll be using Zoom. You're going to have a headset like this. And I think it's quite nice because it minimizes, you know, the possible transmittal of the COVID-19 COVID virus. Okay. So it depends on which country you're going to take the test. Okay. However, what is standard is okay, the format of the test. The test is always composed of three parts. Part one, part two, part two. Part one is called the introduction. 
Okay, part two is the individual long term, and part three is the two way discussion. Now, let's get, you know, let's talk about uh, this in depth. Okay, for the IELTS has a pattern. Okay, it has a pattern for writing, reading, and listening. It always starts with the easy items, and then it gets more difficult, and they always finish with the most challenging items. So, part one should be quite easy for you. Okay, why? Because they're just going to ask you to introduce yourself. The examiner is going to say this. Uh, this is a recording for the International English Language Testing System. Today is the 29th of May, 2021 in uh, San Fernando, Pampanga. The examiner is Lee J. Jesus. This is candidate number 123456. Six, may I see your passport, please? So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you present your passport, okay, my advice is Okay, open it already. Okay, open it to the page with your information and then, you know, make sure that it faces the examiner, okay? And, you know, it would be much better. You will, uh, you can make a better impression if you actually speak while presenting your passport or whatever ID you've used, okay? Because some people just say, uh, hey. okay, that will not make a good impression on your examiner. Why don't you say this, okay? May I see your passport, please? Oh, no problem. Here's my PRC license. Okay. Or, sure, here's my passport. Please have a look. Okay, because it establishes a good first impression. Remember, it's a speaking test. So the goal is to speak, right? Uh, what will they ask you in, uh, in part one? Uh, they're just going to ask you about your work, about your home about your hobbies and interests, you know, everything about you. What do you do uh, to pass the time? Okay, uh, they're gonna ask you if you exercise regular, regularly, if you cook, if you have pets. Okay, and these will be simple questions. Okay, later, I will show you a complete sample of a speaking test because I memorized my previous exam, the one where I got a nine. I was able to memorize it and I saved it. I'm gonna share it with all of you. And uh, you can take a picture if you want, okay? So for part two, they will give you a set of questions about one topic, and then you will have a minute to prepare. So you'll be provided a piece of paper, scratch paper. You can make notes there. After one minute, you'll be given two minutes to speak, and the examiner is not allowed to speak for two minutes. Bawal po siyang magsalita. How do you know if the two minutes are over? When the examiner asks you another question, that's it, that's two minutes, okay? Um, by the way, uh, some people don't know this, I don't know why, but the examiners usually take away the questions after one minute. So you have to learn how to make notes. And it's easy, you know, if you have a technique, it's easy. I suggest that you practice this maybe two or three times a week. You only need 10 minutes to practice like two or three questions, okay? So guys, practice making notes. Yes, sometimes uh, there are candidates who are quite lucky because uh, the examiners don't take away the questions, but the standard is don't rely on that, rely on your notes, okay? And then part three is uh, the most challenging part. Why? Because this is where they will see your upper limit. The examiner's job is to give you the highest score available, okay? The highest score that you deserve, but you have to help them do this, okay? Um, the examiner is not your enemy, okay? Um, if they're giving you difficult questions, that should be taken as a good sign. Why? Because you will not get a high score with easy questions, okay? Remember, the examiners actually don't choose the questions. The questions are there, okay? They're given a set of questions, Right, and they can only ask questions from that piece of paper. So guys, don't blame the examiners. And you know, the more difficult the questions, the happier you should be. Why? Because they're giving you a chance to get seven, eight, or nine. If they ask you questions like, you know, like low level questions, that's a bad, that's a bad sign. I use a performance, yung kapag nangyari yun. Okay, so I want to share with you Okay, uh, sample test, sample speaking test. If you want, you can take a screenshot. 
So these were the questions I got in my last exam in July, oh, almost two years ago, July, 2019. Okay. And I got nine for this test. So I'm gonna give you a minute. I'm gonna give you a minute to look at this one. Okay. So take a look at the questions to the left of your screen. These are quite easy to answer actually, introduction. They're just gonna ask for your name first and then uh, around maybe almost half of the candidates get asked uh, about their work as the opening question. And then the examiner asked me all about the sky, looking at the sky. Okay. Then for part two here, <clears throat> the one with the uh, green box, the question was, talk about an intelligent person that you know. So please say who this person is, what this person does, how you knew about this person and say why you consider this person to be intelligent. So you'll have one minute to think about what you wanna say. They will give you a piece of paper and you can make notes. After that one, you should expect the examiner to take away these questions and then they will just listen to you. They will just stay silent for two minutes. Okay, the two minutes is yours. There you go. And for part three, okay, oh man, part three is the most challenging. Uh, let me have a short read through. How are intelligent people viewed in your society? Is it better to be intelligent or to be rich? Does a person need to be intelligent in order to become successful? Does being intelligent make a person happy? Has modern technology made people more or less intelligent? How can teachers help their students become more intelligent and will teachers still be needed in the future? Okay, yes, hello to our 91 FB live viewers and 72 Zoom participants. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Good evening, anywhere you are in the world. Okay, welcome po, welcome, welcome. So anyway, where were we? Um, let me give you some general tips, okay, for these three parts. For part one, make sure that you don't, well, actually for the whole test, make sure that you don't give short answers. People have a tendency to give short answers, especially in part one, because the questions are quite simple, okay? Try to answer with two to three sentences for part one. Let me repeat that. Try to answer with at least two sentences. Better if you can answer with more, like three sentences would be nicer. Okay. Um, remember, this is a speaking test. In real life, most of the time, it's enough to say yes or no. Okay. But since this is a speaking test, maybe you can add a little, you know, a little explanation to your answer, or maybe provide a little more detail. Okay. And it's not that difficult. Okay. For instance, if they ask you, what do you do for a living? Uh, a lot of candidates would just say, well, I work as a nurse. Okay. So how can you extend that? Maybe you can say, I work as a nurse. I've been doing this for almost a decade now. See, instead of saying 10 years, maybe you can say decade. So you can have a higher vocabulary score. You can also say, uh, I work as a nurse in... Uh, Jose B. Lingad Regional Memorial Hospital, the biggest hospital in my province. You can also say, uh, um, I'm a nurse and I've been working uh, for about 10 years and my specialty is whatever your specialty is. I think nurses have specialty areas, right? So maybe you can add that information. So it's not that difficult, you know, if you, if you know what the examiners are looking for. That's my main advice for part one, two to three sentences, okay? For part two, mm, for part two, please remember that they always want you to talk about one specific answer, okay? Because I've, I've encountered this a lot of times. Uh, they just ask for one person and then the candidate mentions three or four. No, guys, it's just one answer, okay, for part two. Um, if they ask you about your favorite movie, focus on describing one movie, not two, not three. I've even had um, students before who said, ah, sir, my favorite uh, 
uh, movie sir is uh, action action sir because i like the punching and the guns uh, very nice sir like uh, you know uh, fernando po like jason statham you know, sylvester stallone okay so guys no they <laughs> you have to make sure that you're answering the question they didn't ask for action stars okay they asked for a movie ah uh, means one so make sure that you know you you see a lot of these part two questions so you won't make a mistake in interpreting them when the time comes okay and for part three okay part three requires you to give the longest answers okay please please avoid giving short answers for part three all right <clears throat> I told you that you're, you know, uh, that you're supposed to answer with two to three sentences for part one, right? For part three, it should be longer than that. You know, three sentences would be minimum. If you can answer with four or five sentences, sentences, uh, that would be great. Okay. Also, some things you need to know for part three. Um, if you start getting challenged by the examiner, okay, don't worry too much. Okay, instead, you should take it as a good sign. Why? It means that they're trying to see if they can give you a higher score. If they if they start saying, "Oh, I don't agree with you," or "No, nah, I, I think that's not right," okay? or "I think this other option is better," okay, that's not personal. It's just part of the test because a lot of candidates get nervous when it happens to them. Guys, it's just part of the test design, and it's actually a good sign. So just smile. They okay? take it positively. Okay, and then maybe you can tell your examiner, oh, I see your point. However, okay, or I understand what you're saying, but I think, okay, or maybe you can say, oh, you have a point there, but for me, okay, so the technique is first you agree with your examiner, and then you just continue explaining why you gave that opinion. No need to change your answer, because if you change your answer, if you switch sides, then the examiner will also switch sides <clears throat> okay you're gonna be chasing each other around the playground okay, so no need to do that though. so take a screenshot if you want to practice on these questions these were actual exam questions are they still asking these oh yeah yes they are okay they just uh some of my students got these questions not all of them but parts of them okay uh a week or two weeks ago so yes these questions are still active Okay, done. All right, <clears throat> let's move on to the next part. Okay, let me load this up again. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's me. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so I've, uh, I've shown you the format. Now, let's discuss what the examiners are looking for. One of the secrets to getting a high score in any exam, not just in the IELTS test, is make sure that you know how you are being graded. Okay? And don't leave it up to luck. Okay? Don't leave it to chance. Don't leave it to prayer. Well, it's nice to pray. Okay? Pray a little bit, but also you, know, you should do the hard work. So get to know the grading system. And guys, uh, what I'm about to show you is actually public. Okay, you can download this if you want. Here we go. So how are you graded? <clears throat> you are graded in four areas. 25% okay? comes from fluency and coherence. Another 25% comes from lexical resource. 25% comes from grammar. And finally, 25% comes from pronunciation, not accent, all right? Let me clarify this one. Pronunciation, not accent. These two are different. You don't need a British accent, an Australian accent, or an American accent to get a high score. Well, listen to me, okay? I, I, I don't think I have, I have a British accent or an American accent or you know, an Australian accent, right? But I still got an eye because you only need to work on pronunciation. Okay. Okay. Um, moderators, admins. Um, am I supposed to answer questions 
can I answer questions during the middle of my discussion or do we wait for, uh, for the end? If, yes, you can, sir. It's fine. It is, it is I can answer. Can I interrupt a lot? Oh, okay, yeah, because it's an interesting question from, from Abigail. It says, in, in part two, is it necessary to answer those bullet points in order? while you are discussing, while you're doing the individual daughter. Actually, no. Those bullet points in part two are just guide questions. In fact, in fact, you can even skip some of them. Well, if you need to, okay? But usually it's a good, uh, it's a good um, idea to answer all of them because you do have two minutes. In fact, you can even include things which weren't asked there. Okay, let's have a look at that again. Okay, let's go back to the questions. Here, long term, part two. Talk about an intelligent person that you know, who this person is, what this person does, how you knew about this person, and say why you consider this person to be intelligent. Okay. These are guide questions, but you know what? The most important question here is the fourth one. It's always the last one, always the fourth one. Say why you consider this person to be intelligent. Um, a piece of advice, make sure that you spend 20 to 30 seconds okay, on the fourth question. Because if you don't answer this, it will definitely affect your score. However, if you forget you know, maybe the second question here or the third question here, it doesn't necessarily mean that your score will, will go lower because these are just guide questions. Of course, it's sometimes you know there's an obvious um, order to them. I would answer this one first, who this person is. But I think for... The second, third, and the fourth questions, you can actually interchange them if you want. Okay, what matters is you tell a good story. Okay, so don't make it sound like you're reciting. <laughs> okay, but instead, tell it like a story. You know, if you're talking about something that you like, it would be nice if you can smile, if the examiner can see that you're really interested about your answer, about this person, about this book, about this movie. Okay, um, now, they didn't ask how old this person is, right? They just ask who this person is, what, how you knew, say why you consider this person to be intelligent. Okay, can you add the age of the person to your answer? Definitely, yes. Can you give a short physical description of this person? Yeah, of course, because it's still related to the question. In fact, it's gonna be difficult to reach two minutes if you don't give additional info. So my advice is, okay, when you make your notes, don't just stick to these questions. Maybe add, you know, a little bit more. Okay, remember, 5W1H, what, where, when, why, who, H is how. They didn't ask when you met this person or when you found out about this person, but you can add that because it's still related to the question. Okay, thank you for the nice question. I love I love smart questions, <laughs> okay? So um, let's go back to discussing the grading system. So let me show you the official version. Okay, um, can you see my screen? The speaking uh, band descriptors, the public versions. Kita po ba? <clears throat> yeah, let me see. Yes, all right, thank you very much. Okay, uh, guys, this is the public version, all right? There's actually a version that the examiners use, okay? But of course, that's <laughs> that's not gonna be released uh, to the general public, okay? So let's zoom in a little bit. Here we go. By the way, uh, you can download this, or maybe um, I can share it with the admins, and then we can you can post it on your group page, okay? The nurses group. So let's have a look here. So fluency and coherence, this is 25%. Textical resource, 25. Uh, grammatical range and accuracy, 25%. And then pronunciation, 25%. So what should you remember about these descriptors? Okay, let's take a look at band seven since most people, most of the people here require a band seven. There you go. Band seven. Hmm speaks at length without noticeable effort or loss of coherence. Second bullet point, may demonstrate language related hesitation at times with some repetition or self-correction. And uh, 
Third bullet point, uses a range of connectives and discourse markers with some flexibility. If you ask me which one is the most important bullet point here, it has to be the first one because this is where most of us have difficulty in. Okay, speaks at length without noticeable effort or loss of coherence. So let me break it down for you. Let's zoom in. There you go. First condition to get a seven, you need to speak at length. So if you give short answers, it will be impossible for you to get seven in fluency and coherence. Just follow the numbers I gave you. Okay, two to three sentences for part one, three to five sentences for part three. For part two, do you need to reach two minutes to get a seven? No, you know, if you can speak for about 90 seconds, a minute and a half, that's enough to get you your band seven if the quality of your answer is good. <clears throat> However, you know, if you're an eight or a nine, <laughs> Uh, two minutes shouldn't be a problem. In fact, a band nine can probably talk about the topic for about 10 minutes straight. Okay, but you don't need to do that because you're only targeting seven. A good quality answer at a minute and a half is good enough. So guys, speak at length. So avoid just saying yes or no. Maybe you can follow it up. Okay, yes, and then explain why you said yes. No, explain why you said no. In fact, one of the best answers for me is it depends. I love that answer. Why? Because it forces you to explain why it depends. It depends on what. So it usually forces you to explain both sides. So, um, you know, it depends is a very good answer, especially in part three. Okay. So guys, speak at length. Very important. In fact, if you don't, let's take a look at the other band scores. Okay, band score six, willing to speak at length, willing. So it means you're trying, but you're not able to. Okay, how about the band five? Usually maintains flow of speech, but uses repetition, self-correction, and slow speech to keep going. And band four, cannot respond without noticeable pauses and may speak slowly with frequent repetition and self-correction. So. No need to mind these, just keep your eyes on band seven. Keep your eyes on the target, speak at length. Second condition, okay? Speaks at length without noticeable effort. Because there are candidates who can give a long answer, but you can see that they're really having a hard time delivering their answer. So it should look effortless. Let me show you a sample of a long answer, but you know, with, with a lot of effort. Um, can anyone, anyone, can you ask me something? Any question? Keep it simple. Maybe one of the moderators can ask or Sham. Right? Okay, so I'm looking here at the chat box. It says, uh, what is your favorite color? Oh, you know what? This is actually a common exam question. So whoever this is, okay, thank you very much. Very interesting question. What is your favorite color? Okay. Um, my favorite color is uh, 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 green because, um, you know, green is, uh, it's a nice color and uh, it, it, the grass is green and, and the leaves of the, the trees and mother nature, you know, mother nature is green. And uh, that's why I love uh, green. This is color I like. That is a long answer, right? However, okay, you can notice that, you know, the speaker exerted a lot of effort just to say that and also repeated some of the things that he already said to be able to give a long answer. So that's unfortunately, that's still not a seven. Uh, however, that's a six. Okay, next, speaks at length without noticeable, okay, sorry. Second condition, speaks at length without loss of coherence. Okay, what does this mean? You can give a long answer without going off topic. Because some people, yes, they can say a lot, a lot of stuff, but they're not answering the question anymore. And I do encounter this from time to time. Okay, and I'm gonna show you another example. So again, someone asked me a question. Let's, let me take a look at the, at the chat box. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, okay. Let me use the same question. What is your favorite color? Okay. Um, I love uh, green because uh, green is the color of my favorite NBA team, the Boston Celtics, and uh, uh, a famous player from Boston Celtics is uh, uh, Larry Bird. And uh, he became famous because he's really good and because of his rivalry with Magic Johnson. And, you know, during the 70s and 80s, uh, their, their, their rivalry caused uh, some racial divide in the United States. But when they joined together in the Dream Team, they became, you know, uh, best friends. What was the question again? <laughs> Yung tanong po, the question was, what is your favorite color? At first, the speaker was answering it, but towards the second or, yeah, towards the second and the third and the fourth sentence, he was already talking about some things which are not related to the question. So you want a seven, you need to speak at length, give a long answer. It needs to be smooth and effortless as much as possible and make sure that you speak to the top, uh, that you speak about the topic, you don't go off topic. If you can do this, boom, congrats. That's at least a band seven. Okay. Let's move on to the next part. Okay. So I won't explain all of the bullet points because I only have like an hour <laughs> with you guys. And I don't think I need to do that because you're not, you know, applying to be examiners. You just need to get a seven or more, right? So let's just simplify things. Lexical resource. Okay, band seven. This is band seven, this one. Yes, that. <clears throat> First bullet point, uses vocabulary resource flexibly to discuss a variety of topics. Second bullet point, uses some less common and idiomatic vocabulary and shows some awareness of style and collocation with some inappropriate choices. Finally, third bullet point, uses power phrase effectively. Okay. So how do you fulfill these three conditions? First of all, Okay, to fulfill the first one, you need to make sure that you increase your vocabulary. How do you do this? By learning new, not words, not words, but new expressions. A lot of people make that mistake. You know, they learn one word, they see one new word, they look at the dictionary, okay, and then they, you know, and then that's it. They go to the next word. Guys, <clears throat> what you should be learning now are expressions, so groups of words, not just an individual word, because so in language, you don't use words by themselves. They're always used together with other words. Okay? So how do you become, you know, flexible when it comes to your vocabulary resource? Make sure that you learn expressions. Make sure that you read more about different topics because that's actually one of the biggest challenges in the IELTS test is it can be any topic under the sun. Unlike, you know, the other exam, OED, it's all related to your field. It's all, it's all medical. That's why I like it better, okay? But this one, they can ask you about anything except, except religion, that's not allowed. Politics, personal issues, personal problems. These three topics are not allowed in the IELTS test, okay? So don't worry, the, ex the examiner should not be asking you about your religious affiliation or your political views, bawal po yun. That's a no-no right? They want to ask you about your finances and your debts. That's a no-no. Okay, so guys, start reading, okay? In the age of the internet, you know, you can learn a lot of things every day. Next, use this some less common and idiomatic vocabulary and show some awareness of style and collocation with some inappropriate choices. Yes, you don't have to be perfect, okay? Even if you make a few mistakes, you can still get seven with some inappropriate choices. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about this one because it's actually impossible to speak the English language without using idioms and, you know, and uh, what, idiomatic vocabulary. Why? It's full of them. Okay. So if you're a reader, then um, you're probably doing this already. Okay. And please remember, no need to force them. Whenever you use idiomatic expressions, they need to be natural, okay? Just because you use an idiom 
doesn't mean that you're going to get a high score because they're still looking at the accuracy of how you used it. Okay, and you don't need to insert one in every sentence, right? So I'm not going to be too, uh, you know, too worried about the second bullet point. But, but I would like to call on everyone's attention when it comes to the third bullet point. It uses paraphrase effectively because a lot of clients, sorry, a lot of candidates don't do this. Okay, paraphrasing is very important in the IELTS. Look, okay. It's mentioned in band eight, uses paraphrase effectively as required. In band seven, uses paraphrase effectively. Band six, generally paraphrases successfully. Band five, attempts to use paraphrase. And band four, rarely attempts paraphrase. What does paraphrasing mean? It means stop copying the examiner's words all the time. Okay, maybe, you know, from time to time, show the examiner that you know other words that you can use, words that are still appropriate to the question. In fact, if you don't paraphrase, even if you have a very nice, you know, <laughs> accent or your grammar is perfect, if you know a lot of big words, but if you don't paraphrase, they'd have to give you a four. Okay, so please start practicing this one. And it's easier, it's easy to do once your attention has been called to it. For example, what is your favorite color? If you just say, my favorite color is blue, then you might get a four for that. Why? Because you didn't paraphrase. Guys, you don't need to repeat, you don't need to repeat favorite, and you don't need to say color, because when you say blue, that's already a color, right? So what is your favorite color? Oh, I like red. I think it's a very stimulating color. And in fact, it's used by a lot of restaurants like Red Ribbon, McDonald's, and Jollibee because it's very effective in getting people's attentions. Now, that's a very nice answer. Okay, so uh, try to use other words. Okay, sir, what if I forgot to do that? Okay, with this question, then you just do that for the next question. Okay, um, please be aware that you need to do this absolutely, especially in part two in the long term. Let's go back to the long term. Okay, talk about an intelligent person that you know. So how do you paraphrase this one? If you just say, okay, sir, I'm gonna talk about an intelligent person I know and the name of the person is Albert Einstein. If you just say that, you're gonna get a low score for vocabulary. Why? Because you had one minute to prepare and you didn't paraphrase, okay? So do you, how do you do that? Maybe isolate the important terms here, uh, what, intelligent and then person. Can you think of other words for intelligent? Maybe you can say smart, knowledgeable, intellectually gifted, mentally gifted. And instead of saying person, maybe you can say individual, man, woman, scientist, Architect, doctor, you can actually substitute the profession for person, okay? Also, don't say, I'm going to talk about. Why? Because that's the start of this question. Talk about an intelligent person. And then you just say, I'm going to talk about. There's no paraphrasing there, okay? Maybe you can say it like this. Um, for me, Mary Curie is one of the smartest scientists in the world. That's a good answer, okay? Or maybe you can say, you can say that, you know, uh, a smart person that I really admire is Florence Nightingale. A smart individual that I really admire is Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale is one of the smartest nurses ever. Okay, so guys, spend some time practicing your paraphrasing because you cannot do it just because you heard me say it. It doesn't mean you can do that tomorrow. It takes a little bit of practice. Okay, <clears throat> let's move on to the next, uh, next part. So guys, please make sure that you paraphrase more than half of the questions. You don't need it, you know, you don't need to do it 100%, but you know, at least more than half. And please paraphrase your introduction to part two, right? Let's move on to the next one. What's the next one? Here you go grammatical 
grammatical range and accuracy. Ah, the most feared, <laughs> the most feared uh, criterion. Okay, uh, no need to worry too much about grammar. Why? Because it's only twenty five percent. Okay, I know a lot of people are worried about their grammar, but if you have a weakness here, there's a solution. First of all, you can focus on increasing your scores in the other areas. Secondly, you don't need to fix all of your grammatical errors. You just need to identify two. Out of the dozens of errors that you have, you only need to identify your two most common errors and then just work on them. That's it. You don't need to fix five of your grammatical errors or six. Just take a look okay, at the two most common errors and a good teacher will be able to help you with that, okay? Because what I do when I teach is, okay, I actually conduct a complete interview and then I base my corrections on what the candidate says, okay? And then I try to point out, okay, your most, your two most common errors are your usage of prepositions and then your usage of the past tense, okay? A good teacher will be able to tell you. So my advice for grammar is that, Get a good teacher so they can help you identify your two most common grammatical errors. Now, let's take a look at the description. Let me just remove the writing there. There you go. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at band seven. All right, first bullet point. It uses a range of complex structures with some flexibility. Second bullet point, frequently produces error-free sentences, though some grammatical mistakes persist. So what does this mean? Okay, Papa Simplihin ko. I'm gonna make it very simple for you guys. Uses a range of complex structures. It just means avoid, you avoid giving short answers. Okay, and you know what? We already, somebody keeps on writing on the screen, guys. <laughs> Please don't write on the screen. Oh, somebody's playing. Okay. So anyway, um, you know, just don't give short answers. Okay. Diba sinabi ko na kanina yun, I already mentioned it in the first part. Fluency and coherence, no short answers. So giving longer answers also helps your grammar score because they can only give you a seven if you use a range of complex structures. What are complex structures? Complex sentences, compound sentences, and compound complex sentences. You should be using more of these instead of the simple sentence structure. And most of you are doing this anyway. I don't think anyone's using a lot of simple sentences here. Okay. Next, frequently produces error-free sentences. Oh, thank God. So it means, okay, you can still make mistakes, okay? So how do they do this? Um, If you... If you have a grammar error every second sentence, so that means half of your answers have grammatical error, then that's only around a band six, okay? A band seven would have like maybe 30%, okay? 30% of his sentences would have grammatical errors, okay? So guys, um, give longer sentences and then most of your sentences shouldn't have that error. And the good news is you can actually achieve the second bullet point, okay, this one, just by identifying your two most common grammar errors. So no need to fear grammar. It's actually doable. A lot of people have done it. And finally, let's go to the last part. Ooh, pronunciation. Take note, it's not pronunciation because I've seen some teachers posting on YouTube and then they keep on saying pronunciation. Guys, come on, it's not pronoun, it's pronoun. It's N-U-N, pro, and pronunciation, and it's not accent. See, accent is different from pronunciation. When, when you say pronunciation, you're just referring to the basic sound. So your F sounds, your P sounds. In Pampanga, in my province, okay, uh, we have uh, sometimes uh, we have problems with the P and the F sounds. Uh, sometimes we have problems with the H sound. Sometimes we have a missing H or sometimes we put an extra H sound. Um, a lot of my students here in the province also have problems with B and V. They keep on saying uh, five, five. Guys, 
the first sound is okay f fa fa five but the but the close the end sound is wrong okay five no it's not five it's five how do you fix your pronunciation errors first of all identify your problem areas how do you do this well get your phone and then maybe read something get a book read one page record it and then have someone else listen to it not you because you probably won't be able to hear your own errors at first okay someone that you trust someone who's knowledgeable someone who will make fun of you <laughs> okay so anyway let's take a look at this uh, description oh i hate this one <clears throat> it says um shows all the positive features of band six and some but not all of the positive features of band eight it's a useless description it just says you're higher than a six you're lower than an eight i hate it so let's go up let's take a look at band eight because i think band eight is doable for a lot of us okay first uses a wide range of pronunciation features okay how do you do this just give long answers okay because if your answers are long then you'll be pronouncing a lot of different sounds that's it if you you know giving short answers has a negative effect on your pronunciation grammar fluency and coherence so one of the most important things here is don't give short answers okay next sustains flexible use of features with only occasional lapses so yes you can still get an eight even if you make a few mistakes and finally the most important one focus on this one guys is easy to understand throughout l1 accent has minimal effect on intelligibility so let me explain this to you first part is easy to understand throughout so it means the examiner should be able to hear you clearly so speak with a little voice then they're gonna be hard to understand remember some of the examiners are a bit older older than i am okay it's not uncommon to have examiners in their 50s 60s or yeah or their 60s so make sure that you're speaking with enough volume that's the first one secondly open your mouth don't eat your words because i'm interested in not like this you don't open your mouth guys how do they understand you if you do that okay maybe before your interview while you're waiting on that chair, in that chair, sorry. Okay, maybe you can do some stretching exercises. Okay, cover it, you know, stretch your mouth, stretch your lips, stretch your tongue before you start the interview. Okay, it might look funny. Okay, the other people there, the other candidates might be looking at you and maybe laughing at you, but it doesn't matter if you get a band seven, eight, or nine because of that. Nakakatawa nga, pumasa ka naman. O, oh, sinong panalo ngayon? So, anyway. So, you need to be easy to understand throughout, okay? <clears throat> Loud enough volume. Don't eat the sounds. Don't eat your words, okay? And one more thing. If you have too many gaps in your speech, uh, uh, you know, uh, then it's gonna affect how they understand you, okay? So make sure that you minimize the fillers also. Next condition, L1 accent has minimal effect on intelligibility. What is L1? L1 is first language. It should be one L, no? Okay, but linguists label it like this, L1. So language one or first language. So what is your L1 accent? My L1 accent is Kapampangan. Because I'm from Pampanga, I speak that language. If you grew up in France, your L1 accent is probably, yeah, it's going to be French or German. Okay, it's going to be Visayan. It's going to be Locano. Okay, so your first language accent has minimal effect on your intellig intelligibility. It means that you can speak without too much of your native accent. Right? So that's good news. Why? You, you just have to minimize those sounds. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example. Okay. Um, okay. The way I've been speaking is called a neutral accent. Okay. I can actually make this more American, but yeah, I prefer to do it this way. Uh, I spoke like this during my test. Okay. You don't need to say, uh -huh. I spoke like this during my test. 
Yeah, I spoke with a good accent. No, you don't even need to do that. Neutral lang po. You just need to neutralize your accent. And most of us will have some sort of regional accents. All right? Uh, this is not my L1 accent. My L1 accent sounds like this. Uh, good evening to all of you. My name is Lijay Desus. I come from Pampanga. I'm uh, married. I'm 39 years old and I have two brothers uh, and five dogs. <laughs> okay, so that would be a heavily accented answer. Okay, so guys, just identify your problem sounds. Maybe you can record yourself speaking and then listen to it or have another person listen to it and ask them if they can guess where the person is from. Okay, this is the reason why, you know, some people have uh, difficulties getting higher scores because of their uh, first language accent. So no need to study a British accent or Australian accent, just minimize your native accent and then speak with a neutral one. Okay, so that's it. That's the grading system for the IELTS test. Now, I think there are, there are a lot of questions being asked. So maybe we can, now the moderators can ask about them now. So did you see any interesting questions there? Hello, Gladys. Where are you, Gladys? <laughs> Okay. Ipo, magtanong na kayo. Sir, Sir, Sir DJ, so from Arlene Villanor, how about idioms, sir? Is it necessary to include some? I only knew a few of them po. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're targeting a, if you're targeting a higher score, of course, of course, your speech should contain idioms. But you know what? Um, research shows that most people who speak English actually use idioms every second sentence. And it's impossible to speak English without using idioms. It's full of them. So um, my advice is don't pressure yourself too hard okay, when, when it comes to using idioms. Because uh, when I got my nine, I wasn't really thinking about them. You know, I just told my, I, I just told the examiner what I was thinking about. Okay, and sometimes, when you think too much about including idioms in, in your answers, it becomes forced. Okay, here's an example. Okay, why are you taking the IELTS test? Oh, thank you for that wonderful question, Mr. Examiner. Um, I'm taking this exam because I want to go to the land of milk and honey because the grass is greener on the other side. I'm doing this to give my family a better process and when I pass the test, I will be over the moon. Oh my God. How many idioms did you count there? Five? Okay, that's what? That's four or five idioms. But it doesn't sound natural. If you use them too much, they might work against you instead of helping you out. So yes, go ahead. Please study idioms, but don't force it. They should come out naturally. All right, this is, okay. this is from Zaldi. Which is the correct way of expressing agreement on a certain topic or ideation? Absolutely alone or absolutely yes? Same with certainly and definitely. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can use them alone. Uh, you can also use them with yes or no. Okay, not a problem. Um, either one of those forms is okay. Um, um please uh, remember, speaking is not as strict as writing. Okay, there are some, there are a lot of things that you can get away with speaking that you won't be able to do in writing. So I want you to be more relaxed when it comes to the speaking test. Enjoy it. Okay, don't, you know, don't think about forcing yourself to use difficult words. Just make sure that you explain it well, that the other person understands what you're trying to say. If you want to say yes, or oh, absolutely, or absolutely yes, all of those are acceptable. Wala pong problem yan. Okay, next question. I think there is no more questions. We can proceed. Mm, okay. Okay, I can proceed. All right. So while you're thinking of things to ask, okay, guys, since we have a lot of time left, if you want answers to specific questions, if you want answers to IELTS questions that you don't know how to answer, just type in type them in the chat box. I'll be happy to give you sample answers. Okay. There's another question, sir. 
here on Zoom, okay. so we need high vocabs for the entire speaking. How about idiom is it necessary to achieve band seven from Shell? Um, sorry, I didn't catch the last part. Can you say that so again? For the last part, how about idiom? Does it necessary to achieve band seven? Well, it is necessary because um, it's there in the grading system. Okay. However, you don't need to use an idiom for every sentence. <laughs> and a lot of these idioms, they come naturally to people. Okay. So um, again, just read good samples of, you know, good answers, and then you'll probably be able to use them naturally. Okay. Do you need to do them to use them for the whole interview? Yeah, if you can do that, that would be nice. But you only really, really need to show them, I think, you know, in my personal opinion, okay, you can show this uh, in any part. Eh? You can show the idioms in part one and part two and part three, but it's easiest to show them, of course, in part one, because part one is the easiest one, okay? And then for part two, yeah, that's also a good chance. Why? Because you have one minute to prepare. So in that amount of time, you can already think of good, you know, good idioms to use. Okay. Gladys, um, excuse me. Um, there's one question mm -hmm. from Hazel Marie on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can read it. Okay. okay. From Hazel. I just, um, I just pasted it in the chat. So, sir, does answering part three for speaking necessary reach max maximum of two minutes or less? Um, I think uh, Hazel is um talking about part two. So let me just clarify. Right, you need. You're given two minutes to give your answer in part two. So let me show it again to you. There you go. And the one in the green box, that's part two. Yes. Is it necessary to speak for two minutes? Not really. I had students who spoke for like a minute and a half or less, and they were still able to get seven. Okay. Because they're not just grading one area. Okay. Just because and just because you reach two minutes doesn't mean you're gonna get a seven. Okay, because I know a lot of people who can probably speak for like three minutes, but they're going to be given a six. So it's not just the quantity, it's all the, also the quality of your answer. However, if you develop a good technique, okay, then two minutes shouldn't be a problem. And it's all, it all starts with making the notes. Okay, make sure that you have a system. All right? Um, would you like to see a sample? Okay, maybe I can... I can show you one. Okay. Oops. So let's work on this one. <clears throat> uh, part two, the individual long term. So what I do personally is, okay, for a moment. Okay, let me just copy this to another page. Here you go. I'm gonna show you what I do. So talk about an intelligent person that you know. What I do personally is I draw a cross okay, on the paper. So that will give me four areas. Okay, let's call them area A, B, C, D. Okay, first area, what do you put there? Who this person is. Okay, who this person is. Um, my answer is... Sabina and then Albert Einstein. So A, oh, wait, Bill Gates. Instead of writing the whole thing, instead of writing Bill Gates, maybe you can just write BG. Okay, remember, this is a speaking test. The notes are just there to help you organize and to remember what to say. The examiners will not check what you wrote on that scratch paper. It will not affect your score. Okay, please do not write Whole sentences, that's a waste of time. Don't use whole words, that's a waste of time. Just write the shortcuts. Because when you see BG, oh, Bill Gates. When you see JB, ah, Jolly B. When you see MC, oh, okay, I'm gonna answer McDonald's. All right? Next question, what this person does? So instead of, uh, maybe instead of writing the answer, maybe I can just write what he does. So when I see this, I'm gonna remember to discuss okay, whatever Bill Gates is doing. Next, how you knew about this person? Well, from magazines, from television, and recently from Netflix. 
and say why you consider this person to be intelligent. Okay. So why? And your spelling doesn't even need to be correct. Look, I misspelled intelligent, right? Okay, but it doesn't matter. Why? Because this is not a writing test. As, as long as you pronounce it properly, then you're gonna be fine, All right? So guys, no, you've already written answers to each one of these questions now. You will still have some time to input additional questions. What, where, when, why, who, and how? So what can we add here? When? When was the first time that you heard about this person? Oh, I heard about him when I was in elementary school, probably in the 90s. It doesn't even need to be exact. You don't need to say 1994 or 1995. You can just say, oh, I think it was uh, early in the 90s or in the mid 90s during my youth. Okay. When I was in high school, when I was in elementary. Okay. What else? Um, how old is this person? They didn't ask for the age, right? Okay, but if you know it, you can add it. And if you don't, then no problem. Okay, where, where, where does this person live? Where does this person work? Okay, is this person married? How many children does this person have? Guys, there are so many things that you can say. And in fact, in fact, even if you don't know some of these information, you can still work them into your answer. For instance, if you don't know how old Bill Gates is, you can still use that. You can say, okay, one of the people, this, uh, one of the people that I admire is uh, one of the, uh, sorry, one of the individuals I admire is Bill Gates and uh, you know, he's really smart. Uh, I don't know how old Bill is, but I guess he's in his like early 60s, maybe. Guys, maybe it's acceptable in the IELTS test. In fact, your answer can be factually wrong, and you can still get the band nine. Your answers don't need to be true. It's just a speaking test, okay? So a lot of people are worried about that. I think people to the As long as the English is good, you can get a very high score, okay? So this is one of the techniques that you can use for making notes. And you can practice this maybe three times a week, 10 minutes. That's all you need. Did I answer that? <laughs> Yes, it did. Yes, it did, sir. Okay. How about from Babs? Is it necessary to paraphrase a question first or just give a direct answer? Oh, um, they, they don't need to be separate because you can give a direct answer while paraphrasing the question. Because when you paraphrase, you're already answering. Right? Okay, let's think of a question. Let's take a look at these. Let's take a look at these questions that I got. Let me just remove the notes. Uh -huh, there you go. Here, let's choose one of these topics. Okay. <clears throat> what do you like most about your work? Okay, very common question. Probably about 40, 30 to 40% of the people watching right now, you're going to get asked this question in your test. What do you like most about your work? A lot of people would answer, well, what I like most about my work is, mm -hmm. so what to paraphrase, work, you can say job, you can say profession, okay, and then like, instead of saying like, maybe you can say enjoy, so what do you like most about your profession, paraphrase it while giving a direct answer. I think being a nurse is really enjoyable for me because I get to meet a lot of people, I know it's a cliche, I, I, I really did get into nursing because it allows me to help a lot of people. Okay? And it doesn't require me to study for, you know, 10 or 15 years, unlike, you know, unlike uh, being a doctor. So after four years, I can already work in the hospital and help relatives, friends, and even strangers. See? So I gave a direct answer and I paraphrased it at the same time. Here's another example. Okay. Um, let's take a look at part uh, three. Okay. Is it better, <laughs> I like this, is it better to be intelligent or to be rich? Okay, so avoid saying rich and avoid saying intelligent. Maybe you can say smart, okay, <clears throat> uh, instead of intelligent. Maybe instead of saying rich, you can say uh, wealthy, well-off, affluent. Guys, all of you watching, repeat after me. 
Affluent. Go. One more time. Affluent. Go. Okay. Did you say affluent or affluent? I used to say affluent. Okay, and then I checked it in the dictionary and it turns out I, I was wrong. So thank you to my wife, okay, for pointing that out. Okay, that's why, you know, I, it, it, it's nice to have someone, okay, who's also knowledgeable to help you. So guys, no, uh, you can avoid saying rich by saying uh, uh, wealthy, well-off, affluent. So how to answer this one? Okay, is it better to be intelligent or to be rich? In my opinion, yeah, it's it's nice to have a lot of money. It's nice to be, you know, to be affluent. But if you ask me to choose, then I think being smart is the better option. Because, okay, if you have intelligence, you can always find more ways of making money. But if you're just, you know, wealthy and stupid, then soon all of your money will fly away. So I gave a direct answer and I also paraphrased it at the same time. So um, it, they don't need to be separate, sir. You can actually do them in one go. It's just a matter of sitting down and then looking at, you know, maybe you can do, you can look at five to 10 questions during your daily commute to work and then think about how would I answer this? Because a lot of people say that they're exerting a lot of effort, that they're studying, but in fact, they're really not. I've been doing this for almost 16 years and anyone can pass it on the first try if they just take it seriously. Unfortunately, there are so many teachers who promise them miracles. Guys, it's no, it's a matter of familiarization. So the more IELTS questions you see, okay, the more of them you think about, then the better your chances will be. Do you want more questions, sir? <laughs> yeah, ask yeah, it's, this is from questions that you want. Okay. Yeah. This is from Sharon Felonia. Can we use two to three idioms in speaking Porto? Is that okay? Oh yeah, two to three. That's good. That's good. Two to three idioms. That's okay. The examiner will already notice that. And um, for part two, I don't suggest one because they might miss that. But if you're using two or more, then that's already very noticeable. Okay, from Hazel Marie Duhila from Facebook. Mm -hmm. Sir, what are the common topics for poetry that we must prepare? Oh, that you must prepare for. Guys, um, <clears throat> the IELTS has a list of topics that they use for about four months. Okay, and then every four months they remove about, the latest I heard is they remove about half of those topics and then they change them. So it's actually very difficult to, to anticipate, but there are some common topics okay, that are never removed. For instance, they always ask questions about movies, about books, about people, okay, common topics. And then lately, they've been asking questions about, yeah, about um, a child that you know, okay, uh, a place that you've been to, okay, uh, your favorite um, TV show. Okay, and common topics among them. So guys, um, the, the questions for part three are actually related to part two. Okay, so I think it would be better if you study part two and part three in conjunction with each other. Okay, not just, not separately. Um, okay. If you want, I can share some of the common topics uh, on your page. I'm gonna give them to our moderators. I'll send the, the file and then, uh, because it's gonna take me a long time okay, if, I, if I discuss all of them tonight. So I might as well uh, put them in writing and then share them with you on your page. Okay, Bayon, do you like that? Param, so that you have a written record. Yeah. Okay. Okay, more questions, sir. <laughs> yeah. Okay, from Susana Nunez, what happened if you misunderstand a question. Basically, you start an answer mm. the opposite. The examiner will let you continue with your answer or the examiner will interrupt you and repeat the question. How bad that is for your answer? It's very good, but just okay. well, I'm wrong. They will probably give you a chance. Okay, because you know what? Everyone makes a mistake. Everyone misunderstands. So 
they will probably repeat the question. Okay, and then when you, if you give a good answer, if you give a good answer in the second time around, then your first mistake is forgotten. Okay, they're not, they're not that brutal guys. Um, I don't know what your image of examiners are, but these people are professional. <laughs> they are trained very well. They're trained to anticipate mistakes from candidates in these situations. So most of them just repeat the question, okay, and then give you a second chance. Uh, if your answer is correct the second time around, okay, na yan, that's acceptable. Okay? Um, a piece of advice, never answer without understanding the question. Never. Don't do that piece. Okay? Don't guess. All right? If you don't understand what the examiner said, it's okay to ask. Why? Because they're, as, they're, testing, they're testing your performance. Okay? They're testing how you're going to use the language when you go there to that English-speaking country. Right? And you know what? Even in your own language, Kapampangan, Tagalog, uh, Filipino, Visaya, if you don't understand the other person, you ask them, right? So asking questions is okay, but just make sure that you use good English when you ask. You know, naman yun, it's just a speaking test. It's not a knowledge test. Okay? Um, just be clear. Just be clear with what you want to happen because there are so many ways that you can misunderstand something. So, if the voice of the examiner was weak, or you know, if you're using uh, Zoom for the interview in the Philippines, they use Zoom, and then you know their speech was cut off, then you can just tell them, "Sorry, ma'am, uh, I didn't catch the last part." Oh, idiom na yon, no? I didn't catch the last part. Do you really catch it? Diba? I didn't hear the last part. Okay, I didn't catch the last part. That's an idiom. So anyway, sorry, uh, sorry, Lee. Please use the examiner's name. Don't just say sir or ma'am. Please avoid saying that. What I do is I write their name on the paper so that when I need to recall their name, I just look down. Okay, there's the name. Lee. Um, so really, I didn't catch the last part. Can you repeat what you said? Guys, that can get you a nine. Okay, because when you ask the question, you use good pronunciation. Okay, you use what? Good grammar, good choice of words, and it was fluent. Makakanayin ka pa rin doon. Right, so uh, maybe maybe they use the word second scenario. Maybe they use a word that you don't know. Okay. Oh, uh, do you think that do you think that graffiti can be considered uh, a work of uh, sorry an art form? Uh, uh, one of my students was actually asked that. Do you think that graffiti can be considered an art form? Eh, hindi mo alam. You don't know what graffiti means. Just tell the examiner. Just tell them. Okay, Lee, sorry. Uh, I'm not familiar with the word. It's the first time I've heard of it. So what's graffiti? What does it mean? You can do that. And did you hear how I asked it? It's still nice, diba? You can still get a nine with that. So guys, don't worry about asking questions. It's a natural part of speaking. You can still show off your speaking skills even when asking questions. The worst thing you can do is, you know, keep on talking without knowing what the topic is. It's okay to ask. So I'm thinking that for most of us here, English might not be your problem. Your problem might be, you know, your attitude towards the test, how you view the test, because you're thinking of it like a university exam where you cannot mistakes, where you cannot ask questions. Guys, it's, it's not like that. You need to change your perception about the test because if you do this, if you follow what I've been saying, the test will become less heavy. Okay, the weight of the world on your shoulders will be lifted because now it's not a knowledge test, it's just a conversation. Now, you can even say, I don't know. Okay, oh, here's an example one of my students got this question, he got a nine. Okay, nine to ah. This was a bad nine answer. Okay, <laughs> the examiner asked. <laughs> uh, okay, what is your opinion about genetically modified crops? Okay, guys, if you get these kinds of questions, it means you're getting high score because these are difficult. The more difficult the questions towards the end, the higher your score will be. Okay. So what is your opinion about genetically modified crops? My student said, well, I don't know. I don't know too much about that. Um, I've heard of them. I never studied them. So I won't be able to give you a, a clear answer. Maybe I need to do a little research first. 
that's it. <laughs> that's what he said. He got, he still got the nine. So okay, I, I hope this helps. Okay, I, I hope this eases the pressure from your minds. Okay, uh, it's it's very possible. Okay, if you approach it properly. Okay, uh, other questions? Okay. Uh, well, actually, there's a lot. I'm just worried if you still have time, sir. But the, the question was, you actually answered from Salvi. So we will move on to our next question from Kaza. Gladys, are you there? So Kazap says, hello, sir. Is there a chance to tell the examiner that you have a better answer for the question that being asked from the previous answer that I already uttered first answer that, um, that come to my mind? Or I will just expound mm. in the first answer. Okay, the way I understand is you give an answer and then the examiner moved on and then suddenly Ah, you came up with a better answer to the previous question. Can you know? Okay, unfortunately, you cannot, you shouldn't do that. Okay, you shouldn't do that uh, because it will be considered off topic. You just need to answer what the examiner is asking you right now. Okay, if the examiner asks you uh, the second question, then don't answer the first question because your answer will be considered off topic. Unfortunately, it's still a test and the time is limited. Guys, sometimes examiners cut you off. They, not sometimes, most of the time examiners cut you off. Why? Because they need to ask a minimum number of questions. I don't know the exact number because uh, that's confidential information. Maybe later this year, I will find out. Okay. <laughs> um, they have to ask a minimum. So that's why, you know, sometimes they're hurt. Uh, they're in a hurry. Okay, if you go back to the previous question, that that will ruin their whole timing, and that's not going to be good for you, and your answer will be considered off topic. So give your best answer the first time you get asked. Unfortunately, Paul, that's how you need to do it. Okay. <laughs> from RD, Sir DJ from RD, how can we avoid too much or too little fever, sir, especially when you are struggling to think of your answer? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, fillers. Okay, how to avoid fillers. Mm. First of all, first of all, you need to do an analysis. What fillers do you usually use? Everyone has one. My favorite fillers are, I have two. Uh, actually, I overuse that one. Uh, another one of my favorite fillers is, okay, I tend to overuse <laughs> these two. So identify your favorite fillers so that you can avoid them, okay? Secondly, if you cannot avoid making, you know, using fillers, then use different types. Instead of saying, um, 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 um all the time, maybe you can say, um, hmm. all right, let me see. Oh, that's an interesting question. Oh, that's difficult. Hmm. All right, okay, I think, okay, just by varying your fillers, you can, you can already, you know, remove that bad impression. Okay, uh, you can already uh, fix your problem. Secondly, how to avoid fillers? Don't speak too fast. Okay, sometimes because of the pressure, okay, you think that you're not allowed to pause. Guys, pausing is a natural part of speaking. In fact, if you use them properly, pauses can be powerful. Okay, so don't pressure yourself too much. I know two to three seconds is not a problem. It only becomes a problem if you're pausing for like five seconds or more. And if you do it every sentence, okay? But if you're only doing it once in a while and it's not that long, it's only about two seconds, then that's normal. Congratulations. You're a normal human being, okay? Just, you know, identify your common fillers and then maybe vary them a little bit. Okay. So yeah, I have one that is <laughs> from Brady Monroe. When it comes to poster, how many seconds is allowed? Uh, for pause. Pause. For pause. For, example. for pause. Oh, I, yeah. I think I just I just mentioned that. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's okay to pause like two or three seconds, but not more than five. Okay. Um. By the way. In part two, let me go back to part. In part two of speaking, a lot of people actually stop. And then 
they just wait until the two minutes are over, okay? Please remember, the whole two minutes is yours, okay? If you run out of things to say, okay, you've been speaking for one minute, okay? You run out of things to say, all right? Just take a look at your notes, okay? Take a look at what you haven't discussed yet or think about what additional information you can add. And then you can start speaking again. Just because you stop doesn't mean that you're not allowed to speak anymore because the whole two minutes is yours. And you know what? Even if you have a long gap in between, like 45 seconds, then pause for 20 seconds, and then you start speaking again for the remaining 55 seconds, you can still get a very high score with that one because you're not required to speak for two minutes continuously. You're just supposed to give a good answer within two minutes, okay? Okay, Gladys. Okay, I think that's all because most of the questions here were already answered. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just uh, have a quick look. Um, okay, uh, from Floor Jane, how do we address the examiner? Guys, address them with their first name. The examiners will, ouch, ouch. The examiners will mention the name that they like at the start of the interview, but a lot of candidates don't listen. Okay, so when the examiner begins, they will say the name that they prefer. You write it down on the scratch paper in front of you. And every time you want to say sir or ma'am, just look at the paper. Oh, Lee. You know Lee. Instead of saying, you know, sir, you know Lee. Use their first names. Okay, and it will make them like you better. Second question. Why do examiners cut off the takers when answering? Ah, because they have to ask you a minimum number of questions. And don't be insulted, don't get angry, and don't worry if they cut you off. Why? It means your answer is good enough already. The examiners are very smart. They already know how you're going to finish your answer. So sometimes they don't need to hear all of it. Okay lang yan. <laughs> don't get angry. Um, how many minutes for each part of the IELTS test? Okay. In part one is about four to five minutes. It's, it's not exact, all right? Can be as short as three minutes, can be five minutes. Average, mga four minutes for part one. Part two will definitely be about three and a half because they give you one minute preparation, then two minutes to speak, and then in between they have to say something. So that's about three and a half minutes. And then part three, about four, five minutes also. What else? Oh, this is interesting. From Divina and from the Vina Ant. In task two, in part two, will a personal answer matter? Okay. For example, the smartest person I've known is my husband. Guys, it's okay to give personal answers. That's not a problem. Okay. You can even invent. It doesn't even need to be a real person. You can just invent that person or invent that movie. Okay. However, it's harder to do that, all right? It's always easier to base it on, you know, something that's true, a natural answer. But you can give personal answers. However, if you ask my opinion, okay, you, if, you want to, if you want to impress the examiner, you need to make a connection with them. Remember, this is a test of your communication skills, okay? How do you make another person like you? You find something in common, okay? Because the examiner doesn't know your husband, but they will know who Bill Gates is. They will know who Albert Einstein is, Nikola Tesla. Okay. In fact, I think it's better if you answer with a woman and maybe you can say Oprah Winfrey, Florence Nightingale, you know, Melinda Gates, someone that they know because they will be able to appreciate your answer more if they have, you know, personal knowledge about it. Okay. What else? Oh, from Zaldi, I think this is very, uh, this is a very important question. Okay, Zaldi, what is your technique if the examiner asks about an unfamiliar topic? <laughs> what is your idea about globalization, about neo-colonialism? Lalo na po pag talagang walang idea. First of all, it's better if you have an idea. Since we are, you know, since we're educated, we're professional. If you know these questions come out, the answer is study them. That's the best answer for me. However, we're not encyclopedias and we're not computers. No, we don't know everything. So during the exam, if they ask you about something that you don't know, just tell the examiner. 
okay? But make sure that you still show off your English. If you do that, you can still get a nine. So you can say, oh, I know what colonialism is, but I don't have any idea about neo-colonialism. So I cannot really give you a good answer to that. There you go, okay? So just explain why you don't have an answer and it will be okay. Anyway, most of you are just targeting seven. Okay, so while I'm waiting for more questions, okay, I want to share this information with you. Okay, where is that? Let me just backtrack a bit. So guys, um, keep typing your questions, right? <laughs> so uh, my company is World English, okay? I've been uh, teaching for almost 16 years and this company is established in 2009. Okay, why do you need okay, to choose us? First of all, I know that money is difficult. That's why and a lot of information is available on the internet. That's good. When I started teaching, we didn't have the internet. Well, we did, but it was not as, as nice as we, as we have it now, okay? Um, I think it's good enough if you're just targeting a low score. You can review by yourself. You can go to YouTube. You have listening tests there. You have a lot of blogs from different people. But for the higher levels, it might not be enough. I've handled thousands of students already. And then they usually tell me, sir, this is my second or this is my third take. The first time I did a self-review, I passed my listening and reading, but I failed my writing and speaking. Yeah, usually happens. Why? It's not enough to watch a video. If you want to learn speaking, you want to learn speaking, you have to speak with someone who knows the grading system so that they can point out your weaknesses and then give you sample answers. I know a lot of teachers and some of them, they just ask questions and then they just tell you, oh, you need to fix your grammar. Oh, you need to fix your pronunciation, but they don't give you specific advice. Guys, that's a bad teacher. Get your money back. A good teacher will conduct a whole interview with you and then they will tell you exactly what mistakes you made and then give you suggestions, specific suggestions, okay? Um, if you just want a band six in writing, uh, yeah, you can just watch videos online, but if you want to get 6.5 or seven, then you need guidance. Next, in World English, you will have access to the teachers. There are some companies with really excellent head teachers but then they have like 40 or 50 teachers in their team and you never have a chance to talk with their head teachers. What's nice about World English is, okay, you will have a session, you will have sessions with me and you will have sessions with Barry. That's assured because the focus of our review is one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, we have group lectures, but we just consider them a bonus. The teaching really happens with just you and the teacher. Okay, so you won't be shy about making mistakes and you can ask all the questions that you want. And you will have access to these teachers. Sometimes they show you a profile of a good teacher. Hindi mo naman nakausap because they're busy or they just give you to another teacher. No, we will be training you personally. Okay. Next, we're not a big company. We're small. In fact, we, we only had like four branches. Right now, we only have two because we closed the other branches. Okay. But if you ask IDP and British Council about us, we're highly trusted. In fact, we've been awarded several times. They, and they, they even sent me, okay, and you know, another one of my colleagues to international conferences. I was able to attend a British, Malay, uh, British Council Malaysia conference for free. They paid for everything, my hotel, my conference fees, my flights. And the next year we won that again. We're highly trusted, ask them about us. Also, our approach is very personalized. We focus on one-on-one -on -one classes. Uh, we do classes are just a bonus for us, okay? And guys, we have a, we have a group that provides you with daily guidance. We make sure that you get reminded to do something every day because the best way to pass this test is, you know, short but consistent effort. It's better to study for 15 to 30 minutes every day than to study eight hours once a week. Remember that. We're very flexible. We can teach you anywhere you are in the world because you know we, we're very used to doing uh, Zoom classes. You can see the tricks that I've used so far, right? Because we've been doing online classes even before the pandemic. And finally, 
Okay, um, if you compare us to other review centers, we're not actually as cheap as they are. We're not cheap. Okay, we're also not expensive, but we're not cheap because you get the quality that you're willing to pay for. If a company tells you they will teach you unlimited forever, okay, for only 2,500 pesos. Wow, two five, forever unlimited. Then, you know, I'd be, I, I think twice about it because how can you do that? Forever unlimited for two five. And we don't rely on these kinds of cheap gimmicks, all right? It's just good, solid teaching for us. Okay, yeah, um, here's a promotion. Take advantage of this quarantine period and be more productive, okay? Our next batch book is on the 30th of June, but actually you can start anytime, okay? And uh, if you enroll, we can give you a 500 peso discount. Just tell them that you attended this webinar when you contact our manager and we will give you that discount, okay? Um, for those of you who don't have time to review and would just like to you know, purchase materials, I've actually written three books okay, on writing, Writing Task 1 GT, Writing Task 1 Academic, and Writing Task 2. So these are compilations of previous actual exams. Like my essay book, it contains about 40 essays from the actual exam, and it has answers already. So instead of thinking about it on your own, you can just read the sample answers so you do so that you have an idea when these questions come out in the test. What else do you need to know? Um, if you want to contact us, okay, just go to Facebook and search World English IELTS to pull your main page name. Okay, do we have any more questions? Yes, sir, from Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Is it compulsory oh, to Oh, nice. <laughs> is it compulsory to talk in a formal way with examiner or can we talk in a casual way like we talk with our friends? That's a beautiful question, Scooby-Doo. Okay, thank you for asking that. Excellent question, I love this. Um, Don't do it. Okay, don't speak in a formal way. Why? Because the IELTS interview is not a formal interview. It's not a job interview. Okay, it's not an embassy interview. It's just a speaking test. They're trying to test the language that you're gonna use when you go there in your workplace. You know, when you're what? When you're visiting the different tourist spots, when you're talking to strangers, that's what they're testing. If you try to force yourself to speak in a formal way. What will happen? You'll be limiting yourself. You'll be, you'll be feeling like this. You will be feeling constrained. You'll be thinking about each word that you're saying. Don't. Okay? Speak casually. Speak casually. In fact, I want you to start using a lot of contractions instead of saying, I want to say. You can say, I want to say. Instead of saying, I am just, I am just a student. You can say, I'm just a student. Okay? Yes. Talk in a casual way, you're gonna get a better result. In fact, in 2006, when I when I got 7.5, I went to the interview wearing long sleeves and a necktie, and I sat like this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Of course, ma'am. I was speaking like that. And then in 2019, when I got nine, I I was just wearing a shirt, no more neckties. Okay, and I just sat like this. Well, you know, on one hand. Uh, going abroad can be a positive experience because of the money, because of the uh, you know the new sites, the new food. On the other hand, homesickness is a real problem. So there are good sites and there are bad sites. I got nine when my body language was like that. So no, don't be too formal. You'll be limiting yourself. Chill lang, chillax. Okay, other so questions? Another, yes. Another question from Kazzap for part three question. For instance, I have answered the question, given example, and already explained the answer. But the next question is somehow still relevant. Does it mean I have to generate another idea, but this, but still stick to the same view from my previous answer? Thanks again. Okay, I think I think we can agree that the question is not very clear. So, Cass, can you? Uh, Rephrase the question, or you know, if you even if you want to ask in Tagalog, I don't mind. Pwede din. 
Okay, or if you want to turn on your mic and ask it directly so you can ask it better, pwede rin siya. Because I really want to answer your question, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to approach this. Okay, we're going to wait for your re-question, right? On Facebook, but we can ask her to replace it. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's another... I'm looking at the other questions here from Ed's, Ed's by Lee, how do you, don't call me sir, Lee is okay. I don't like sir, Lee na lang. Lee, how do you formulate the answer for part three questions? How do you formulate the answer for part three questions if the questions ask about comparisons or contrast, advantages and disadvantages? Thank you, all right, that's easy. You just use on one hand, on the other hand, and make sure that you answer both. If they ask you for both advantages and disadvantages, and you forget one, it's going to be considered an incomplete answer. So make sure that you answer both. And to mark your answers, you just say, ah, on one hand, okay. however, for some people, on the other hand, on the other side, you can use any of those words, okay? So that you have a clear demarcation of answers. Now, if they ask you to choose something, um, is it better to read a, a magazine or a newspaper? Is it better to read a book on paper or are ebooks the better choice? Guys, instead of just focusing on one, maybe you can discuss both. Okay, for instance, okay. Um, which is better for you, working overseas or working in your own country? So I would say, oh, that's a good question on one hand. Uh, working in your in your motherland is a, it's a very comfortable situation because you're familiar with the environment. However, if you work overseas, you know, then it would be a very good experience because of the travel and probably the salary will be higher. Uh, but personally, if you ask me, I'd rather work in my own country because I'm, I'm very close with my family and I don't think I can take the homesickness. And my parents are also quite old, so I want to be there for them and take care of them. There you go. So don't focus on just one side. Maybe you discuss both sides that they're asking. Oh, from Master G. Yeah, there's a lot of review centers like that nowadays. Some lecturers are not qualified. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've actually, I actually screened the applicants to our company. Okay, And um, the first thing I ask for is their TRF test report form, because I'm the teacher who's taken the test, right? Or if they haven't taken the test, at least they should have a related course, like, you know, uh, a degree in English, a degree in teaching. That's what I look for. And a lot of them give me their TRFs, and they only got like six in writing, 6.5 in speaking. And then I asked them, your, your company allowed you to teach nurses, okay? Nurses require seven in speaking. However, you only got 6.5. So isn't that a bit problematic? The applicant said, sorry, yeah, pero carry naman. I mean, dude, that's not a very responsible way to, <laughs> that's not very responsible. Okay? If you want to teach people to get a seven, then your grade should be higher than seven, right? So guys, be careful about <laughs> the people that you listen to. The problem with the internet is there's so much information available and you cannot trust all of it. So many fakers out there, okay? Make sure that you're getting the best value for your money. All right, so it's 10.41. Uh, do you have any other uh, questions left? I still have more questions. That is, I think on Facebook, it's already answered and in chat box. Mm -hmm. But I have one question, but this is not, I don't know. If this is for your, for me, it's okay. from Maria Maniago. Mm -hmm. um, she said, hello guys, meron po ba kayong group sa Facebook? Pwede ba ako maka-join? Maybe you can answer that, sir. Is that for me yeah. or for the nurses? That's why. Um, Maria Maniago, if you're asking about IELTS Filipino Nurses group, you're already in the group where you are watching the Facebook. So you can just send us message. But if you're... Yeah. Asking about speaking practice, yes, we have. And then now it's just mentioned by Lee J that they have Facebook account. 
for their review center. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys. So thank you for having me, mga sir at mga ma'am. You know, it's it's my honor to be to be asked to share what uh what little things I know. Okay, maraming salamat. I hope this session helped a lot of uh, your members. If you'd like to invite me again, yeah, I, uh, I'll make sure to make myself available. I'll just tell my team, and they will fix my schedule. And if you need more information about IELTS and even the other tests. Okay, OET, because I was a former inter interlocutor there. Okay, just uh, tell me po and let's set an appointment. Um, guys, if you want to schedule uh, a lecture like this from our native speaker, okay, Sir Barry, let me show you this picture, then I'd be willing to, I'd be willing to schedule it, all right? So coordinate lang tayo. Dito po, this guy, oh, I love this guy, British lawyer. I think, okay. sir, we have it on Tuesday. I think oh, we have oh, okay. He was, uh, he's available. Excellent. All um, right. Although, her, his rather, his uh, schedule will be on the afternoon. So. Yeah, because uh, he has to sleep early. Yes. He's getting old. <laughs> yes. So, thank you, sir, DJ. We are looking forward for your next session with us. So, any parting words from our members oh yeah sure okay parting words um okay i've been teaching for 16 years and it really saddens me when i see people failing because nobody needs to fail okay nobody needs to fail the test if it's really important for you then you will make time for it you know what you want to succeed don't give yourself excuses if you have time to watch netflix if you have time to drink with your friends, if you have time to go shopping, which you shouldn't do because of the quarantine, then you have time to review. Okay? The biggest challenge in reviewing is finding the time to do it. Don't, you know, don't, don't come crying to us you know, after you failed the test because you could have passed it on the first try. Okay? Secondly, you know, if it will help you pass the test, maybe it's worth paying a professional or an expert to help you out. So just in case you need personalized help, one-on-one -on -one tutorials, just you and nobody else, we're here for you. Just contact our managers there and we will have a good teacher available. That's probably me. <laughs> we'll have a teacher available for you. Okay. Good luck po in your test. And then do something every day. Do something every day. Never let a day pass by without doing something that will help you succeed in your life. Yun lang po yan. Consistent, everyday effort. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. That's it for me. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Um, if you have questions about World English Review, you can just send us a message and then we will forward you their contacts. Okay. So, any party words, sir? Uh, sir so, yes, that is. Please, are we done? Before we end this uh, session. What, do you have announcement? Do you have surprise? No, not what? yet. It's still surprise. So I'll just announce it tomorrow after our success story. Okay. So yeah, everyone on Facebook and Zoom, thanks for coming. And you know, this is all for you, all the members of IFNG. So my name is Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah. That is. So thank and you good and good night. Good night from the Philippines. And Sir, Gladys. Gladys. Okay. Hi, Marvin. Okay, bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, World English Review. Thanks.